Hello, good morning! So for today's video, what I am going to discuss is the journalizing part or the second part of the accounting cycle. So when you say journalizing, this means that we have to follow the double entry bookkeeping system. What is double entry bookkeeping system? It is a system which means that for every value received, there is a value parted to it. So kapag meron kang pinigay daw, dapat meron ding babalik sa'yo and vice versa. So that is definitely what we call our double entry bookkeeping and yan yung fina-follow ni journalizing. So this this system reflects the twofold effect of a business transaction. So in a business transaction meron tayong dalawang possible scenario which is meron kang ipaport or meron kang ibibigay and then meron kang mag-receive. So value received and value parted with. But I'm no longer going to discuss kung ano ba yung value received, value parted with, but let's just go directly doon sa rules ng debit and credit para ma-apply natin kay journalizing. So the last time I've discussed your accounting cycle, which um, explains of the journalizing part, na-introduce ko sa inyo yung debit and credit na terms, and that is basically kung saan tayo mag evolve right now for the journalizing part. So, uh, pag-debit and credit, ito yung ina-apply natin when it comes to journalizing. So, I I hope you still remember that I discussed before about this one. So, there is the debit side here and also we have the credit in here. So, for example, ang ginagawa natin journal entry is naka-receive ka ng cash of 100,000. And this cash came from the service income. So, kunwari, nag-render ka ng service and then, ang tawag natin dun is service income. So, nakatanggap ka ng 100,000. Ganito natin siya, ito journal. So, I've already explained before kung paano yung format niya and I've already um, given you an example. I think I shown before. So, if you still don't know what a journal look like, ito siya. Okay, so, yan yung journal and ang journal ginagamit niyan para mag-record ng mga transactions, ng business transactions of a business. It looks like a diary of the business for the transactions that are happening doon sa business from day one hanggang matapos yung taon na sinuserve nung journal entry na yan. So, but before... Pa, sino ba yung pupunta kay debit? Sino pa yung pupunta kay credit? Bago natin malaman yan, we have to know the rules of debit and credit. So, what are the rules of debits and credits? So, before I've introduced sa inyo si T-account. Ang T-account natin looks like a big letter T, which in, we're in, dito natin ilalagay yung pangalan ng account. So, here we have the account title. So, kahit anong account title yan, mapa cashman, mapa um, accounts receivable, liabilities man yan, mapa equity man yan, pupunta siya dito. And then, in here we have the left side and in here we have the right side. So, ano ang papasok kay left side? Ang papasok dapat ay si debit. And then, sa right side naman, ang papasok is si credit. So, sino ba ang dinedebit natin? Ano ba ang kinikredit natin? So, basically, all accounts that we have discussed under charts of account, your assets, your liabilities, your equity, your revenue and expenses, and even your Contra accounts, papasok sila lahat kay debit or credit. There is a rule here that all of these can go to either debit and credit. Ang importante lang is, kailan mo ba sila ito debit? Kailan mo ba sila ito credit? Now you know the assets, liabilities, liabilities and equity and this form part of your balance sheet. So when you talk about balance sheet, anjan yung accounting equation natin na asset is equal to liabilities plus equity. When we say revenue and expense naman, this is your 
income statement. So, lahat ng mga accounts na napag-usapan natin under the balance sheet and income statement, they can either go to debit or credit. So, there are no exact exact rule as to whether they could be debited or they could be credited. That is why meron tayong rule which is what we call your normal balances. So, when we say normal balances, ito yung kanilang balances when they increase or nag add ka. So, for example, sa asset side natin, so we have your asset. Yung asset natin, ang example niyan is, for example, si cash. Si cash, pwede siyang tumaas, pwede siyang bumaba. So, ag-add ka or ag-less ka. So, when you add and when, when you deduct, nasaan kaya yung normal balance? So, ulit, mag-t-account tayo. So, we have here account titles. Okay. So, si asset, for example, we have cash in here. Kailan ba mag add yung cash? Or kailan ba siya tataas? Nung Nung, nung yung mato basuna, papanan na, is it debit or credit? Nung bumaba basuna, papanan na, is it debit or credit? According to the rules, ang normal balance is when we talk about cash, in nasa left side siya. Ang liabilities naman, ang normal balance niya is nasa right side. Okay? Ang equity natin, ang normal balance also, is on the right side. Sa so revenue and expenses, kapag tumaas, ang normal balance is nasa right side. And ang expenses, sa kabila. Okay, so we have that. Ang contra account, usually ang, ang contra account lang natin is allowance for doubtful accounts and yung accumulated depreciation. Since these are contra asset account, meaning contra siya sa asset, kaya baliktad siya. Dito siya sa kabila. So, contra asset accounts. So, eto yung mga normal balances natin. So, take note, when we talk about normal balances, ang pinag-uusapan natin is, kailan ba mag increase yung account na to? So, if it increases or nag-add ka doon sa account na yan, papasok, papasok siya doon sa normal balance. So, for example, kay asset, kay cash. Kapag tumaas siya, i-debit mo siya. Pero kapag bumaba siya, i-credit mo siya. Okay? So, papasok si cash, pag po, papasok si cash sa debit side kapag tumaas yung value. Pero kapag bumaba yung value niya, papasok siya doon sa credit side. So, technically, these are the normal balances and ito yung rules of debit and credit. Okay? So, if we expand more about the normal balance, or the rules of debit and credit. Okay, so we have here rules of debit and credit. So, andito yung t-account natin ulit. In here, we put your debit and we put your credit. So, si credit nasa right side, si debit nasa left side. So, alam na natin na si asset nandito sa kabila, si liabilities with the other side, and also with your equity revenue and contra asset accounts. Okay? Sa other side, we have your expense. Okay. Ang asset na debit yan kapag nag increase Pero papasok siya kay credit kapag ang asset na yan nag decrease Si liabilities, nakadebit yan kapag nag increase Or nakakredit yan kapag nag increase Pero kapag bumaba yung liabilities natin, liabilities, papasok siya kay debit. Ang equity natin, ang normal balance niya is nasa credit kapag tumaas. Pero kapag bumaba yung equity natin, nasa kabila siya. Okay? Ang revenue natin, nandito sa kabila. So, it always increases. Ang expenses is part of the equity decreasing. That is why, andito si expense. Likewise with revenue. So, revenue, nandito siya kasi part siya ng equity na nag increase So, as 
with your investments. And kapag bumaba yung expense. Okay, so technically in here, tumataas sa expense. Okay, so decrease in equity kapag merong expense, kapag merong kang withdrawals, and also kapag bumaba yung revenue or income natin. So kung titignan natin ulit, yung normal balance dapat is always, yung normal balance is laging kung kailan tumataas yung account. So, ang normal balance natin always is yung asset nasa debit side, yung liabilities nasa, nasa credit side, yung equity nasa credit side. Also, revenue, credit side, yung expense nasa debit side, and also we have your concha asset accounts. Okay, so ito yung mga normal balances natin that we have to Remember, so that we can go directly with your journalizing. So, kapag hindi nyo alam ang normal balances, you cannot go directly with journalizing. Kasi kailan mo ba siya i-debit? Kailan mo ba siya i-credit? You will not know that because hindi mo alam yung normal balance. Now, if you know your normal balance, for example, si asset naka-debit dapat kapag tumataas siya. Ngayon, bumaba yung asset. Nakita mong bumaba yung asset. Ay, mapanso na EJ credit side. That is why you have to know whether the balance of that certain account is debit or credit for us to know kung saan sila papasok. So, for example, yung cash natin. Nakatanggap ka ng cash of 100,000. And this cash is a service income on your part kasi nakapag-render ka ng service sa kanila. So, how will you journalize this? Since nakareceive ka ng cash, yung cash natin, nag-increase siya ng asset. E alam natin na kapag nag-increase yung asset, nasa debit side. That is why you have to debit your cash of 100,000. And then, yung service income naman natin, since nakatanggap ka ng income, tumaas din yung revenue mo. And in here, we have revenue, ang normal balance niya is credit side. That is why yung service income nasa credit side of 100,000. Another example is, for example, bumili ka ng equipment. Yung equipment mo worth 1 million. So, you've bought an equipment worth 1 million and nagbayad ka ng cash. Okay. Since nagbayad ka ng cash, bumaba yung cash mo. Therefore, kapag bumaba yung cash, alam natin na kapag bumaba siya, nasa baliktad na siya, which is your deb credit side. So, alam natin na i-credit na, i natin yung cash worth 1 million. So, lagi nating tatandaan na ang journalizing is always meron siyang dalawang elements. That is why we follow your double entry bookkeeping system. Double entry meaning dalawa yung pumapasok, the value received, and the value parted. Okay, so we have the value received and the value parted. That is why parate na yung journalizing natin is equivalent pareho yung dalawang side. Kung ano yung nasa debit side, ano yung nasa credit side, dapat equal yan. That is why doon sa una nating example, yung cash and service income, debit, 100,000 of cash, and credit service income, 100,000. So, pareho sila ng equal na 100,000. Now, in here, sa second example natin na equipment, bumili ng equipment ng cash. Okay, so sa credit side natin, alam natin papasok si cash of 1 million. Now, definitely, merong 1 million dito, pero ano yung i ilalagay natin account title dyan? Since bumili ka ng equipment, yung equipment tumaas ang asset, papasok siya doon sa debit side. So, we will put here equipment since yun yung pinili natin. Nag-increase si asset, nag-decrease si asset. That is why naka-debit si equipment, naka-credit si cash. Okay, another example. So, this is one, two. Okay, third example. For example, nagbigay ka ng salary sa mga employees mo. 
So, sabi natin, kan, sabi natin dun sa income statement mo, chart of accounts, kapag nagbibigay ka ng salary sa mga employee, ang tawag natin dun is salary expense. So, for example, yung salary expense natin amounted to 100,000. Now, yung pinambayad natin ng salary expense is also cash. Yung nagbayad tayo ng cash for the salary, bumaba yung asset natin. That is why, meron tayong i-credit na cash of 100 Na alam natin na dapat equal tong, tong dalawa, that is why we also have here 100,000. And ano yung ilalagay natin dito? Okay, so since salary yung binayaran natin, it is an expense. And we, when we try to look at the normal balance, andito si expense. So kapag tumaas daw yung expense, nakadebit siya. That is why yung salary expense ilalagay natin dito sa debit side. Kaya kapag nagbayad ka ng salary, ang journal entry natin is salary expense of 100,000 and credit of cash 100,000. That is your rules of debit and credit. Kailangan mo lang malaman yung normal balance for you to know whether to position it on the debit side or the credit side. So technically, ang kailangang intindihin is saan ba yung normal balance? Ano ko nak asset ang normal balance niya is nasa debit side. Pag sinabi ko namang liabilities, ang normal balance niya is nasa credit side. When we talk about equity, ang normal balance niya is nasa credit side. When we talk about expenses, nasa debit side. When you know your normal balances, you can never go wrong with journalizing since alam mo na kung saan sila papasok. Okay, so in connection with this uh, lecture, I am going to give a handout. And yung handout, meron siyang discussion about journalizing. And we also have illustrations on how we are going to journalize. But for our easy reference and illustration, I am going to discuss one problem. And we will try to journalize it one by one so that you will know how to journalize it.